Hey folks, I'm uh, doing some work in the garage, cutting my stuff down still. Uh, I appreciate the all the great responses and um, words of encouragement about my recent announcement about the move to the UK. Uh, someone came up with an idea to maybe um, talk about um, international moving and instruments and all that sort of stuff. So I'll kind of tell you off the cuff uh, my experience thus far um, and maybe it will help some people in the future if they're planning you know some sort of international move with their uh, instruments um, I should firstly admit to you that this is probably the worst time to move um, international freight and travel uh, has gone up exponentially as you know oil prices have gone up all around the world and it's probably more expensive now than it would be to wait. Um, however, I put this move off so many times um, that I don't want to wait any longer. Um, I had planned actually to entertain a move two or three years ago, uh, but it got put back because of the pandemic. So um, I didn't want to do it again. So I'm just going to forge ahead. Um, there are a number of different ways that you can... Um, move your stuff internationally. Um, there are companies where you actually can rent the containers um, and pack them yourselves. There are companies where you can um, rent the whole container and they'll pack it uh, for you. And of course, the price is more on the second one. Um, those are probably more for people that are packing up their whole house, including furniture and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you won't use a container uh, unless you're taking a considerable amount of stuff and maybe some uh, furniture. Um, so there are container share companies as well, as which, which is what uh, I've gone for. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, it's cheaper to, you can find companies that uh, partition out containers and they take care of everything uh, for you. Um, and it's a little bit cheaper than using a whole container um, and a little bit easier too um, to work with those companies. Now, I didn't go with the cheapest option. Uh, I did some research and found that there are a lot cheaper options than what I went with. Um, however, uh, a lot of those cheap options uh, have hidden costs and um, are, the companies are famous for um, quoting one price and then it becoming a lot higher as you go through the, the process. So I went with a middle of the road company, a, a reputable company, a company that I looked at a lot of their reviews uh, and they're well rated. Um, and so they're not the cheapest, they're not the most expensive, they're somewhere in the middle of the pack. Um, it's a pretty well known company, um, Laser International Movers. Uh, and I found um, a representative that works uh, out of this area. And um, they do the whole thing. So, um, you know, you basically do a walkthrough of all your stuff. They give you a quote uh, of what the shipping's going to be. Uh, and then you set up a shipping day, which hasn't come for me yet. It's going to be early August. Um, and then they pack up your stuff uh, for you. They do all the packing. Um, because you're sharing a container that makes them liable um, for all your all your stuff um, and then there are two options for insurance coverage you can have a blank coverage uh, of insurance which covers every item up to a certain amount I think the amount is 2500 or if you have a lot of really high dollar items uh, a lot of valuable stuff uh, you can get more itemized insurance um, so that you can, you know, actually assign insurance values to um, each stuff individually. Uh, I went with the blanket one. It's cheaper and, you know, all my stuff pretty much falls under um, the cost of the uh, maximum coverage. Um, so it'll be uh, fine for my purposes. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, 
Yeah, so, you know, you, there are cheaper ways to do this. My sister actually just moved, and she got one of the uh, cheap, really, really cheap um, uh, setups, and they did all their own packing. They packed everything in totes, and then they actually drove it to the um, international ship at the depot and dropped it off. But already, I think they've been hit with uh, extra costs up to a couple of thousand, I think. So uh, it it turned out to be more expensive than uh, they were quoted. Well, with the method that I'm doing, which is a little bit more expensive, um, I didn't just go with the cheaper one. Uh, everything's sort of included in the costs. So they do all of your um, paperwork. They help you set up the um, lading uh, bill for the port. Uh, they help you navigate all the insurance. Uh, and then they help you um, prepare uh, they actually do a list of all your items they do an automated list for you that then gets reported to British Customs upon entry um, so uh, you know there's not really much place in the procedure for spiked costs and the guy I'm working with you know said if you want the cheapest shipper this is not it I'm gonna be up front with you um, but what we do provide is more peace of mind um, because there are uh, more things that we take care of on our end uh, and less chances of uh, things surprising you and so far it's gone pretty smoothly I still haven't uh, still getting ready for the ship out date um, but I decided because uh, I have you know stuff like guitars and cellos and, and things like that it's probably better for me not to go with just the cheapest option and maybe to do a bit of research uh, and you know go with something that is a good comprehensive and reputable all-around international shipper uh, and take some of the headache out of it so you're not preparing your own documents all your own documents and you're not being surprised uh, along the procedure uh, I know this is not as detailed as um, some of you might like, but uh, I will perhaps do an, a follow-up later on after maybe I've done the shipping uh, uh, date and everything shipped out. Uh, it takes uh, international moving, it, ha uh, it has slowed down a bit. I think it takes now from the U.S. to the U.K. and probably the other way as well, probably the U.S. to Europe. It takes two to three months from, um, uh, especially if you're going door-to-door -door. so I'm doing door-to-door -door shipping in other words the shipping company picks it up here at my house uh, where I live and then they deliver it to the new address where I'm going to be moving uh, there are other um, um, variations of that uh, you can do door-to-port -to -port, uh, or even port-to-port -port, but um, uh, that's where, according to my representative, where the nightmares happen. He said he absolutely doesn't um, recommend uh, trying to pick up your goods uh, at a port. He says, um, you know, that's where most of the issues uh, come into play. It's much easier to let a shipping company uh, deal with all of the transit and uh, on the other side as well. Um, and uh, deliver your goods to to your house. It's probably a little bit more expensive, but uh, it's a little less hassle. Uh, and of course, um, you don't have to do things like rent, or whatever is the equivalent of a U-Haul uh, is where you're going, uh, and try to navigate, um, you know, freight pickup at, at, at a port. Um, which, from what I'm hearing, and I looked at some um, uh, um, customer. Uh, testimonies on various sites that is absolutely hell <laughs> trying to navigate uh, your own pickup at a port ports don't like dealing with um, regular people uh, individuals either they'd rather just um, um, deal with freight companies um, so I just went with uh, the recommendation plus it's easier on the other end because I don't know you know when I'll have a place I don't know when I'll have uh, a vehicle uh, so it's just easier to go door, uh, to door to door and set it up that way. Another good thing about this company too is they um, will hold your stuff if you get to your destination and it takes you a week or two to um, finalize an address. Uh, they will get your, you know, you can't, they, 
they can hold your stuff or warehouse your stuff uh, and then deliver it to you um, you know when when you secure an address so uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue because I've timed it to where I'm going to be in the country probably a month a month and a half until my stuff gets there and I'm sure that I will uh, have um, secured um, you know a living space uh, in that amount of time so uh, that's kind of what I've uh, gone through um, thus thus far I will tell you that when they did the walkthrough, which was just a simple filming uh, on Zoom of your stuff, you know, the box amount and stuff, uh, the quote I got back was so high, it was about nine grand uh, in, in dollars. Uh, and I think I had something like 26 boxes of books, um, probably about seven or eight boxes of records, four or five boxes of CDs, plus household goods I'm not taking I'm not really I'm not really uh, attached to anything else um, those are the only three things that I am attached to instruments and music media and books um, and then you know I talked with my, my partner I was like that's too high so we went through and um, I spent the last few weeks cutting everything down I think I've cut down from what was about 25 26 boxes of books to like 12 so I've cut those in half I actually sold off the majority of my uh, record collection, just kept, uh, you know, maybe a box, a box and a half uh, of special uh, records. But I had a big classical music collection that I've been sort of um, working on for years, and I had a guy just uh, come and buy the whole thing. So that's, I think, about six uh, less big, heavy boxes of records that are going to be going on there. Uh, I've also cut down a lot on my instruments as well. I originally had a certain amount in mind, but I've sold on some uh, some of the ones I had originally intended to take. So I can cut that, you know, $9,000 bill down to maybe something more like five or six, which is uh, more manageable. And I think you pay half when they pick it up and uh, produce all the paperwork, and then you pay the remainder upon delivery. So... Um, that's how it works in my instance. There, there are lots of permutations. There are a lot of different ways of doing it. There are a lot of companies. Um, there are a lot of hidden costs. There are a lot of sharks in the water that are going to take advantage of people who um, don't really do that much research. Uh, so if you are planning or thinking about a moving abroad, uh, give yourself a few months to really look into it. Uh, ask a lot of questions. I When I originally wrote to about five or six companies um, to inquire about international shipping, I only had one guy that actually wrote back in person and had a conversation uh, with. The rest just sent me um, um, requests for uh, a, a list of my stuff. And I said, I wrote back and said, I, I don't have a list of stuff. I'm just trying to make some preliminary inquiries to how this all works. And I had one person that was personable, uh, spent some time with me, uh, answered a lot of questions. I met, I met him on the phone a couple of times. And that's the guy I ended up going with. Uh, the other people just wanted to, you know, what's your list of stuff, uh, you know, and, and proceed from that. It was, it was very... Um, uh, formal and um, unfriendly so bear that in mind that you know you might talk to five six companies before you get somebody who you know will engage you as a as a real person uh, uh, and give you some good feedback I found that too with the the uh, pet movers that I've been working with I think we talked we sent requests to five or six of them and uh, the the you know amount of personal personable uh, response we got is so minimal um, it's really weird people uh, don't want to take the time um, in doing that um, I, I guess because a lot of people inquire and don't follow through I don't know what the reason really is but just be aware that it's really hard to get um, you know a live person uh, to engage in conversation and, and give you you know heads up on how it all works uh, a lot of these places are automated. They just want you to send a list of stuff with weights and things like that. And it's all very um, sort of cut and dried. Uh, I actually appreciated 
having someone sort of chat to me about, you know, the ins and outs of the business and how it all works and what the different choices are and permutations, differences between company types of freights. Uh, there are two um, container sizes. Uh, I think one's a, a, a 10 by 20 and the other is a 20 by 40 or something like that. Uh, and there are different, there are companies that have um, odd size um, containers as well. But those are the, those are the two industry stand, uh, standard sizes. And you'll be surprised. It takes a lot to actually fill up even the smaller one. Um, we decided early on, you know, uh, mostly because we're not really attached to things like furniture and housewares, we decided not to try and take any of that. Um, so there's no way we're going to fill up a container. So um, going the full container route, that didn't make sense uh, in our case. But, um, you know, some people take everything. They, they pack uh, all of their furniture, housewares, even electronics, because you can buy step ups and step downs now um, to convert the uh, voltage from 120 to 240 and back. We, I decided not to bother with any of that. So I've got, you know, not taking any electronics or appliances. I think just computers, which are dual voltage. Nothing else is going. No furniture, no tables, no chairs, hardly any housewares. Um, just clothes, a few books, <laughs> a few guitars. Uh, that kind of stuff. So that's uh, kind of what I've um, set up. I'll let you know um, when it happens, how it went, and maybe do a follow-up uh, after the uh, stuff has departed and is on its en route uh, to its destination in England, and maybe even a, a follow-up on the other side to, to let you know how everything went. Um, it's expensive. It's a, bit, a little bit uh, nerve-wracking, and you have to follow um, strict guidelines uh, and provide um, information if you don't want to get snagged you know in, in customs uh, things like that there are also a lot of restricted items as well um, so for instance when I pack up my tools I'm not going to take any of my um, uh, you know glues or, or varnishes or anything like that I'm just going to get rid of everything um, on this end and then just to reacquire it on the other end because there are there are a lot of restrictions on uh, chemicals and things like that um, so yeah you get provided with uh, you know lists of uh, uh, prohibited items obviously I don't have any weapons or anything like that but um, some people do and you know that's a whole uh, different uh, procedure if you want to even think about um, uh, taking stuff like that so uh, yeah, it, the simpler you keep it, I find it's the easiest. Uh, so I ha will probably have most of my stuff packed loosely. You can't seal it because they have to be able to inventory everything because uh, they, they're going to be liable for um, you know what what's being declared through customs. Uh, however, they will, when they come, they will repack everything in their own fashion and manner. Um, he did tell me to hold on to some guitar and and cello boxes um, because they don't specialize in their boxes and they may be able to use some of my boxes so I will do that um, also uh, it's probably good uh, to if you're gonna ship some instruments to have hard shell cases uh, I've got hard shell cases I would say for about 85% of my instruments and the rest have really really good padded gig bags which I will then probably um, put into a box of some sort so um, you don't want flimsy um, you know vinyl dust cover type cases so if you're thinking about going abroad think about you know getting some used cases um, and then of course before they come to pick everything up I will detune my guitars probably um, I don't know, by probably by a couple of steps, uh, more than I would do for just, um, you know, shipping uh, in, in the same country. Since they're going across the ocean and will be in a, con a hot container or a cold container, who knows uh, what, it, what they'll be subjected to. Um, yeah, so they'll be in hard cases. I might get like shrouds for all the guitars. Um, I've heard that some people put in the, the saline packets um, because of the humidity um, uh, talking to the guy though he doesn't 
he thinks if they're in hard shell cases, um, that you know that that will be sufficient. So you don't have to worry so much. Where I'm going, you don't have to worry about things drying out like I always have living here. Uh, I won't need my, you know, army of uh, humidifiers like I had here. It's the other way, other way around. Uh, will be my new concern, and that is increased humidity, not dryness. So, um, you know, but if things are in in cases and perhaps sealed in the cases, it's probably not necessary to have the um, the the uh, the packets, the the you know anti humidity packets. Although some people uh, um, do use them uh, and think they provide some you know, protection. I'm not, con uh, having looked at it, I'm not convinced that's the case. So I probably won't do that. Um, but anyway, that's sort of a, a quick, uh, you know, sort of recap of everything I've gone through so far. Uh, and I thank the, the person that asked me to do this because it's actually an interesting thing to include uh, on this channel. So this will be part one and I'll, uh, I'll follow up with a couple of other videos later in the summer and towards autumn about you know how the procedure is going how, how the different stages of the procedure is going this is just the prep stage and getting everything packed um, and then there will be a pickup um, early august and um, then it'll be two or three months until the delivery on the other end so uh, that's what's going on uh, so far i don't have any instruments out here this is all my books uh, a few boxes of cds a couple boxes of records i have cut this in half i promise you uh, after seeing that first quote um, so hopefully, uh, it won't be nearly as painful as what it might have been. Anyway, folks, I appreciate all your kind words, uh, um, in the comments and all the responses that I've had. I've, I had a couple of people, uh, get back to me about, uh, UK related stuff that I might find useful. And I did I keep it coming, um, uh, you know, um, educate me. Uh, I may be English, but I haven't lived there in many, many years, so. Uh, it's always good to learn uh, new things. All right, folks. See you on the next one.